Hey, how you doing? Charlie Diamond here. Thanks for looking at my channel. Now, I thought I'd start doing some of these vlogs, which is uh, just some kind of insight into, uh, into me, some of the things I listen to and why I do some of these things. And I thought that it might be kind of interesting for you guys to, to know a bit more about me, my backstory. So today I'm going to start this off by telling you about my backstory and how I got into music and all the various changes that have happened over the years and how I've kind of like ended up doing what I'm doing now, which is making music videos for YouTube. So music, well it all started in the, um, in the 70s for me as a young kid. Uh, there was always guitars around, hanging around the house. You know, dad had a couple of guitars. He was in a skiffle group in the, uh, in the 50s um, playing with his mates. He never took it too seriously, but there was one occasion whereby he was playing in the Grand Hotel in, in Falmouth, which is where I'm from. And, uh, uh, and someone spotted them as they were playing and singing and, uh, and said, hey, let me take you up north and we'll get you a contract. It never happened. But um, I wonder how things might have been different it had that happened. But yeah, there were guitars hanging around. Um, he worked away quite a lot when I was growing up. Um, but he had a vast record collection. Uh, and I can remember things like, you know, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, um, all Dr. Hook, all sorts of albums were in this record cabinet that I'd put on sometimes. Even Jimi Hendrix was there and stuff. And also the radio was playing a lot. Radio 2, every morning we'd be woken up, my sister and myself, to the sound of Terry Wogan, which was a radio presenter back then in the, in, uh, in the 70s on, on Radio 2. And the, the house would be full of music before school. So I'd hear all of these hits all the time from the 70s. So the 70s were a massive influence on my, on my musical career. Possibly um, sort of subconsciously in many ways, but it, it's there for sure. So yeah, I mean, I first started dabbling with the guitar, I suppose, late 70s, badly. I remember the first, the first song that I tried to get to grips with, which Dad showed me the chords to, was uh, House of the Rising Sun, you know, the... Uh, Anyway, uh, that, that went on for a while. I didn't really, I sort of stopped the guitar, I dabbled with it a bit, it felt really difficult. It was like, well, this hurts my fingers. But I sort of dabbled a bit. Yeah, and then um, I can remember at one point, uh, there was also a piano in the house because mother used to play a bit of piano for the local Sunday school. And she was, well, she is a good sight reader. So she would sit down behind the piano and play this music. And it was an incredible sound that came out. And, so she put a piano in the house to sort of encourage us to go down that road. And I was really, it started to fall in love with playing the piano then. And I think it was mum at some point said, do you want some piano, let music piano lessons? And I sort of said, yeah. And I remember struggling at the time academically with school. Like, you know, nothing really made a great deal of sense to me then. You know, the school environment was, I just didn't get it. I don't think I really got life, really. But when I started playing piano and studying music, something clicked inside my brain, which helped me make sense of the world. And, you know, in hindsight, looking back, I've done all these kind of like, you know, tests that you do. Um, and it turns out that I'm a kinesthetic audio learner, you know, which is fancy terminology for me that I learn by moving and um, an auditory clues. So of course, playing the piano, moving and, and hearing sounds, it really makes the world make sense to me. And, um, and to this day, that's how I operate. Um, I'm happiest in, when I'm moving about and I'm making music. So that was then, and then uh, another big milestone was when uh, my uncle, he was always fascinated by electronics. Um, he ended up being a pilot but he used to come back from different countries around the world with these synthesizers, and I was always fascinated by that. And one day, early 80s, goodness knows, 81, 82 or something, he came along and dumped this Yamaha CX-5 music, 8-bit music computer in, uh, in, in the home, and, um, and I started dabbling with that. Um, this was the days of FM synthesis. And at the time, I was kind of like an indie boy, you know, I'd gone through the gone through the 70s, then got into the punk thing. Um, I went down the punk route for quite a long time. I remember having a copy on a 12, uh, seven inch single of the Sex Pistols frigging in the rigging. And I used to play it quietly so that my parents wouldn't hear, 
hear the lyrics to it. Um, I don't know if you know that. Check it out, Friggin' in the Rigging, uh, the Sex Pistols. Yeah, and you know, The Clash and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then I got into more of the indie stuff, you know, some of the new romantic stuff and real mixture of early 80s influence. Good times, you know, in the ska music, madness, all of that, the specials, you know, the jam, you know, I had the Fred Perry t-shirt, stay, stay pressed trousers. But then, yeah, a mixture of the synthesizer stuff with uh, that CX-5 8-bit music computer and um, hooking that all up with MIDI and guitar, you know, learning guitar, uh, that was kind of a real impressionable period for me. Fantastic times, and I ended up getting a job. One of my first, not my first job, but one of my first job was um, working in a music local music shop called Musicians Workshop, which was primarily a guitar shop, uh, which was you know like for a young kid uh, in his early teens, it was just perfect, you know, like surrounded by guitars and setting them up out in the back for customers and just brilliant, really, meeting all the local guys in bands, and I was just fascinated by the whole music the whole music scene really, and, all, and the interesting characters within it. Uh, yeah, amazing. Uh, I then formed a band with some local guys, you know, a uh, bass player and uh, called Dom, and this other guy called Johnny, who had this amazing hair, like back in the days of goth, you know, an indie rock, he had this jet black hair down, way down his back, you know, full of hairspray, leathers everywhere. And we all went down that road really, you know, in our first band called The Liberty, we were, clad in leathers, earrings, you know, um, playing a lot of indie rock, a lot of original stuff and some covers too. Kind of indie punk, post-punk, post-indie kind of gothy stuff. Uh, and we did really well, we were really popular actually. We did very well out of it. Um, got off of these management contracts and all sorts of things. Uh, we all turned it down and imploded, but um, it was great. Um, again, great influence on me, loads of gigs, an early age, 16, 17, I think I began gigging. <laughs> and um, so yeah, so just sort of moving forward from then, I made a mistake of joining the Navy. Um, I say a mistake, it was kind of good because I learned a trade, which was an audio electronics, but I was never suited to the, uh, to the, to the military. It made sense at the time because it was kind of, kind of felt like a way out of a local small town, which it was, but I didn't stick around too long. Came out of there and started working in some recording studios and then doing some guitar teaching and still hanging around music and I've always gone back to music to be fair. Uh, and then I was playing in some local band, uh, one particular local band, uh, which was a kind of a, um, like a working, I call it a working band. So we would go out on Sunday lunch times as a, uh, as a jazz band, playing standards and sort of, you know, function jazz music, often reading it off of, you know, reading the dots off of paper. And the band, and, the, and at the weekends and the evenings, we'd be like a party band, go out and do, weddings and pub gigs and holiday camps and stuff like this but it's an amazing education to, to have that experience of, of a working band you know it's you're there to work to entertain and to provide what's required it was a brilliant discipline and the band leader was a guy called Bob Bob Peters rest in peace Bob um, he was a huge influence on me musically uh, specifically for that working mentality he was also he was a teacher in a in schools but he was just starting up at a local college and he said hey Chris you know you need to come and start teaching I'm starting up these sound engineering courses making records I said what are you talking about I'm not a teacher well he persisted for a long time you know and uh, eventually I kind of caved in and I I said well give it a go you know what's the worst can happen and I because I've always had that kind of mentality it's like well let's say yes and then figure out how to do it later which has worked well for me over the years uh, so I did that and yeah, I went to the local college and started teaching and I mean, I was like lecturing and I was like younger than some of the students, you know, I was like 23, 24 or something. Because he always said that I had this knack of making something or taking a quite a complex subject like audio engineering, you know, it's, if you get outside of what you're hearing and, 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 and the, you know, the sort of creative aspect behind it is the is engineering principles, right? It's, it's engineering waveforms and electronics. And because of the trade I learned with the with the military, I knew it. So I knew, knew how a compressor worked. You know, I could take the lid off a desk and I knew what the things were doing and knew what a potentiometer is, how pan pots work and etc. Cetera, et cetera, routing, audio routing. And back then it was tape. You know, we were working with tape with the students and cutting and splicing tape, sticking it back together. 
Um, this is even before sampling, really. Anyway, it turned out I was really quite good at it, and uh, and I liked it. I enjoyed giving and helping other people to understand how all this stuff works. And for whatever reason, I stuck with it for a number of years, you know, three or four, maybe five, and then I got a bit bored and moved away, went away to Italy and, you know, emigrated to Italy and lived there for a while. Um, came back, and at some point I thought, you know what, um, perhaps I should take this teaching bit a little bit more seriously because I had no qualifications in it so I went and got a master's in in online education um, and the, but the point I'm going to make is for my thesis for that I I developed an online school um, and this is my claim to fame I, it was the first I invented the first online school for music this was like 99 2000 you know Berkeley online didn't start till 2002 so yeah you know, I was well ahead of the game there and um, yeah the school was called audiocourses.com and uh, and I had students I mean I ported I ported a, a qualification which was in the face-to-face -face one I ported it for online and we had students from all over the world literally every corner of the world you know back then it, it, studying online was kind of like rocket science you know it was still modems you know there wasn't any of this high-speed internet connections and Studying online was like, what? You've got what, an online school? <laughs> but yeah, so that, that was great. It really was kind of like uh, pretty much the first in the world for the online stuff. Anyway, I ran that successively for about eight years. And then the School of Audio Engineering came along and said, hey, we'll buy it off you. And those guys are pretty big, you know, 50, 55 campuses in as many countries around the world. So they bought that off me. And it came along at a great time because I just had, we just, my wife and I just had our first kid. And it's like, mm, we need to set some roots up here and you know get a house and all the rest of it. Uh, so I did that, and I can't tell you how much fun running that school was. I mean, it was just amazing. The people that I met, um, actually some of them are still friends today, good friends, who I have a lot of respect for. We, we did some amazing things, pioneering things with that school. A lot of those things that we did have been adopted by you know the buyers, and it's sort of, that's what they do now. Uh, and, and in that, I met lots of really cool people because we were running some sort of VIP courses. So we had amazing record producers like Stuart Epps, you know, helped develop some courses with those guys and uh, Dario Dendi. And uh, these are people that have worked with like Alton John and um, George Harrison, Chris Rear and even Oasis and, you know, great times. But yeah, I sold that. And when I sold it, I, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but... I kind of became a businessman for a few years, you know, like, because I took what I'd learned about running an online school and I started doing that as a consultant for other businesses, which wasn't related to music. So I dropped the music for a number of years there. It was profitable. It was great. You know, it was needed because of the family and we had started having a couple of more kids and it was good. And I did that for another eight, nine years, I suppose. But um, fast forward, and in that time, I, although I didn't, I said I dropped the music, I, I can carry on playing in some bands. I played in, a, you know, some really cool bands. I played with uh, uh, the Bare Knuckle Blues Bands, which was, you know, that's Tim Mills of Bare Knuckle Pickups. You know, they make pickups for anybody and everybody, really, in the, in the, in the rock world. Um, we did some huge gigs. It was good fun. Um, and some other bands as well, some cover bands and all the rest of it. And I put another band together, a funk band. But it, and so I carried on a little bit, but just kind of like part-time hobby stuff. But it wasn't until lockdown came along. And I was having a conversation, you know. So like every Friday during lockdown, and I'll be honest with you, I enjoyed lockdown. You know, a lot of people, you know, found it really difficult for whatever reason. I totally get that, you know. But selfishly, I found it really good for me because I found this headspace of... And I felt the world slowed down and it just gave me a great time to reflect on what was really important to me. And that's music. Um, and I, I used to get together every Friday evening with my best buddy from school. He's about the only one I'm still in touch with from school. And he said, Chris, you know, and he's been with me from like, he's been on the road with me. He's done lights for me, made videos years ago. He's always been there. He knows me inside. He knows me better than anybody. And we used to get together on these Friday evenings and watch Netflix together. And he said, man, you know, why don't you start doing music? You're like, why are you not doing it? It's what you should be doing. And he's right, you know, like I had this epiphany, like, do you know what? I'm gonna pull the plug on all of my other business operations. And um, I mean, I had other businesses that I'd grown and sold and in the interim period, but it wasn't really ultimately, ultimately making me that happy. 
Um, so that was it. I had the epiphany during lockdown and got the audio software out, dust off the cobwebs from it, uh, got some plugins and set the studio up again and started doing it. And, um, and I thought, well, I need to make a video now. So I did the first video, which was all green screen. And uh, yeah, so one thing after another, these videos started happening and um, started doing covers. Uh, yeah, and they were all green screen um, initially. And that was a, a baptism of fire, you know, learning how, because I knew nothing about making videos like zero. Absolutely nothing. So I had to learn everything from scratch. What, how does a green screen work? How do you do that? What's lighting about? How do you edit it? So with him and his consultation, our meetings and chats, we that's where I am now. And, it, and it, so I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to him. Uh, and he's continued to help me out with a number of videos since then. I've been doing it now for about a year. And along the way, I've started to write because um, going back to my first band, I used to write lots of songs. And they're always there, you know. I've always picked the guitar, played the piano, and there's always something there that wants to come out. And even more recently, since this lockdown, and since I've gone back to music, I've felt this more of a desire to, to say something, you know, feel like I have something to say and write music. And um, again, start studying the, the process of songwriting. And so that's where I'm at, you know. Um, and I've got to say, it's it's one of the best things I've ever done, uh, other than having kids, <laughs> because it makes me so happy. It, it, it's my therapy. It, it's 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 because there's nothing like you know when you're making music and when you play music, you're in the moment, right? There's like nothing else on earth which compares to it. You know, it's like the stars align. You know, like. It just makes sense. Something inside your body resonates and you're in the moment and there's nothing better in life than being in the moment, right? And that's what I get out of music. I mean, I can sit there with my headphones on, listening to a mix, tweaking different things in the mix for like literally hours and hours and hours. Um, and it gives me great pleasure and, it, and it's, it's incredible therapy. So as I said, the lockdown thing, you know, oh, ugh, you know, nobody would want to go through this again, but we've been through it. For me, it was a blessing actually. And, and that's why I'm here with this channel. So that's it. What I want to say to you guys is, you know, like if you're, if you have some kind of creative thing that's just on your back burner, do it. Just follow your passion, do what makes you happy and um, things start working out. You know, like I'm loving this now. I'm loving putting content out on YouTube. You know, in, what I'm going to be doing now going forward is doing more and more videos. You know, I want to increase the frequency that I make uh, I'll put new videos out, new music videos out, because I want to spend more time making music and more time publishing it. Um, and in between that, so 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 with that, it'll be more sort of point and click on location shoots, not so much green screen stuff, because it takes forever. And I don't want to be spending hours and days and days doing green screen. <coughs> so it'll be more location shoots, because uh, that allows me more time to concentrate on the making music, which is the bit I love. And then in between that, I'll probably do some more of these kind of videos on all sorts of topics relating to music. That's about it today. I really appreciate it. And if you're still here, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments about any of this stuff. Interact. Uh, I'm here to grow this channel. Um, and quite frankly, it's here for you. Um, it'll be, you know, pretty heavily focused on, on a British audience, I should imagine, but not exclusively, you know. Um, it's just that a lot of my influences musically come from the British scene. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of British music. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Let me know what you think in the comments. Really appreciate you, uh, your engagement. Take it easy.